Welcome to the next episode of ERT. My name is Kara. And my name is Derek. Wow, that was slow. And yeah, this is episode 13, which is kind of ominous for maybe one of the topics that we're going to bring up today, which is like the sad state of theme parks or roller coasters, or there's just been a lot of like downer kind of things. Maybe not huge things, but definitely like small minor things that are kind of starting to stack up. Well, right. They all add up and it's kind of like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. So we could all say it starts, um, like, okay, it started kind of with top thrill two. the roller coaster goes down. Not really sure when it's going to come back up, but I guess maybe on a slightly positive note on that, I guess apparently the, uh, uh, I believe his name is Tony Clark, the PR person there for Cedar Point, was on the radio like a few days ago, and he did mention that they don't anticipate Top Thrill 2 to be like a whole summer thing. So I was going to say, there's been videos of it potentially testing. Yes, it's been testing, but from what I understand is don't get your hopes up with the testing. It's just, it's basically Zamparella themselves checking out certain ride parts and uh it's in the testing phase, but it's not like the testing getting ready to open phase, I guess you could say. Like well, testing particular we, parts. We still have no clue what's wrong with Tom Thrill No, nope, uh, just, just pretty much lecture. But then, of course, obviously, with Steel Curtain being down for the entire year, uh, Hyperia, which is that new hyper coaster by Mock Rides all the way over across the pond at Thorpe Park, that roller coaster opened for a grand total of one day and is now closed indefinitely which is very unusual with mock rides i would say uh obviously very disappointing for all those out there because that coaster (laughs) looks amazing i think has potential to be probably one of the best coasters opening in 2024 which is so yeah that's disappointing for them over there and then here we have what was it that i think it's called the all-american triple looping roller coaster i might be over exaggerating the name or whatnot (laughs) but at Indiana Beach, that's that roller coaster that got shipped up from Mexico to here. Uh, that ride has been having some issues as well. I guess it is up and running, but then it, it goes down periodically for days or something. I really don't know. But uh, so there's that. There's also, if we're rewinding back, so last year we went to Six Flags Over Georgia and they were opening that year that Kid Flash mm-hmm. dueling roller coaster. Well, it like opened finally and then it opened again finally all the way back in like December, January, then it broke down. And then I guess they did some kind of major refurbishment, which I don't know how you refurbish a brand brand new ride, ride. but they did some upgrade to the chain lift. And then I believe I just read that it broke again and the ride got stuck on the lift. So now the coaster is once again (laughs) broke down indefinitely or at least half of it. I don't know. So... Not Yikes. good for that manufacturer. And again, it's just the continuing signs of the the so problems don't really extend. What, what? what? What's going on? Why? What's going on? Why? I, I have no idea. I mean, it's kind of interesting because like, OK, are these are they cutting corners? I was gonna or, say, are, would you consider these rides to still be safe? Well, yeah, I don't think that they wouldn't be safe. And I think maybe we're looking at it the opposite way. We look at it as like, oh, they've been cutting corners and these rides are breaking down and they just can't hold it together. Or maybe it's that their um, their standard for safety is so high that there obviously causes a little bit more issues on the back end of making sure it meets and continues to meet those standards. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I would say it's a good thing. I mean, for sure. Uh, obviously, we want roller coasters to be operating in uh, top uh, peak performance. And also then there is the factor of money, (laughs) Uh, so to speak, like just because your roller coaster breaks down and we think, oh yeah, you're just gonna start fixing it, but how much does it cost to fix it? Who's paying for it? Is the manufacturers, the theme park? Yeah. Those kind of various aspects. Well, right, that's been a question that we've toyed around with over steel curtain like who's responsible to fix steel curtain is it sns is it kennywood the ride has never operated reliably no yeah it's i mean it's had those spots here and there where it's ran with like two trains but that's been very rare i've rarely have i ever experienced two train operations on steel curtain so who's who's responsible i don't know i mean 
I guess it all comes down to the situation was the obviously the manufacturer might be again we don't know we're just lecturing here uh it could be the park maybe not following the the protocol set in place by the manufacturer or maybe the manufacturer had some defects that they weren't aware of or or is it just the fact that it's a, wear and tear. a prototype that is untested we can't and... guarantee yeah i don't know really don't know same thing with top thrill too i'm assuming i mean obviously with zamperilla there on site right now i would assume zamperilla themselves are probably possibly fitting the bill but again very pricey i mean every day that your major attraction is down that's lost revenue for well right sure. and to think about i mean every time i get on social media i'm hit with an advertisement for cedar point every single time and the first thing that flashes up in their advertisements is Top Thrill 2. And it's like, this ride isn't even open. Yep, not running. But so, yeah, the problems kind of extend just beyond the roller coasters as well. Uh, we have seen the news, what was it, Six Flags Over Texas, is that they are closing, I think it was like every Tuesday. I think it's Tuesdays. Uh, throughout the whole entire summer, um, So, which is very interesting, that they're going to be only operating, I guess, six days of the week. And it sounds like even some of their attractions are very limited. Uh, just from people that I know down in that area have been saying that certain rides, even on a weekend, there'll be roller coasters closed to not operating, which is concerning. I, I don't know if maybe this is just Six Flags cutting back on all expenses before the possible merger goes through, which as far as I understand is still moving full forward, uh, full steam ahead with uh, Cedar Fair and Six Flags. But then I also heard something along the same lines. I think it was like Six Flags Over Georgia with their water park that they were closing down a day or two. I, I uh, can't remember where I, if I can I was confirm say, on that one. But Since Six Flags announced that they were going to only be open six days a week in Texas, there's been a lot of rumors that have been floating around about other parks closing down a day during like midweek. And it's kind of hard to sift through, well, what is actually true and what is not. And why they're doing that, too, because this could be, I guess, a couple factors. It could be the park doesn't have enough staff to stay operating for six days a week or the attendance is down. Maybe the season pass purchases are down or just maybe overall operational costs like are too high to keep up the same standard that they had last year. So I don't yeah. know, I'm just gonna throw out numbers here. Let's say if the park saw like a million guests a year and let's say they were still on track to do a million a, a million people a year, but their operating costs have gone up. So now they're saying they would have to have even more guests than that. So that might be a reason or a factor. I don't know, but... We'll see, it's all speculation. We've also seen parks like putting up signs that there will be additional service charges added to anything that you purchase in the park, whether it's food or just a bottle of water. And so they're trying to cover additional costs that way. So yeah, it's really concerning with, uh, I mean, obviously Karen and I, as we go to a lot of theme parks and amusement parks, seeing these rare, various changes with schedules and obviously these surcharges, it's obviously prices have gone up. I mean, that's very apparent. I'm not gonna get into a conversation of talking about inflation or whatnot, <laughs> but bottom line is prices are going up businesses are cutting back well and it also makes it extremely difficult for us to plan trips because if we're going to plan a trip say we're going to be gone for the whole week we're going to plan to go to parks and if we think that a park is going to be open for the whole week and we could go any day and then a week before our trip they suddenly announce that they're going to be closed on tuesdays like that throws a huge wrench into yeah plans which Thankfully, up to this point, hasn't really been a huge factor, but it's definitely something we need to pay attention. I do remember back when we went, ironically, it was in Texas back in 2017. Uh, we were under the impression, I, again, I don't remember if we just read the calendar wrong or if things changed, but we were under the impression that both Six Flags Fiesta Texas and uh, SeaWorld San Antonio would be operating every day while we were there, and that actually was not the case. Really? They were closed, so we had to pretty much pile our whole trip tight around the weekend. It was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That. Yeah, well, that was like seven years ago. But it was a long time ago. <laughs> yes. 
Which is why we went to the beach and then we went to... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that whole thing all piled tight. But It just, it feels like 2020 all over again where the parks had weird Well, it gives schedules. you that, like, I don't know, PTSD feeling. Yes. Like, yes where you're like, oh, are we good, going backwards? Good. Like, are we going to be doing that same thing again? Parks are going to be closing, you know, short operational days. Because, I mean, if that's one of the things I really miss, especially since COVID 2020 was going to a theme park and having the park being open until 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. And a lot of parks were closed till seven or eight. And that kind of dragged on for a year or two after that as well. Still some parks went back to on. 10. There's some, they have kind of adjusted their hours that like, instead of opening up at 10, they open up at 11, which I'm weird. I actually like, I really enjoy those early morning hours because usually it's a little bit cooler, less crowds, mm -hmm. and then also vice versa in the evening as well. So when you cut back on either end of that day, it's uh, disappointing. I mean, obviously, you can't just close down midday. Like, hey, we're closed <laughs> from 3 to 5, and then we open back up. I don't know. That would be just be a logistical nightmare. But Well, and parks are beautiful in the evening, too. I mean... Well, yeah, you get to enjoy the lights. So many parks invest a lot of money in their light packages on rides, and they're beautiful. And it's just a completely different experience to be in a park when it's dark out. And yes. you see all the lights and the atmosphere changes, and it's a lot of fun versus during the day. Exactly. Yeah, it's very nice, that atmosphere. Is it concerning? Yes. Do we know what's going on? Not exactly. But I don't know, just something you just kind of sit back and you watch and... Unfortunately, we don't really have much more information than the rest of you. I mean, that's, oh, you don't you don't know the future. I do know the future, but I'm not allowed to say. Oh, okay, so, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's how. It <laughs> well, I just it makes me wonder. We've seen like the movie industry kind of tank at the beginning of this summer, and that's that's. I mean, I would put movies in the same category as like the entertainment of going to. Well, yeah, park. it's definitely entertainment. We could totally unpack the whole movie thing as completely separate because well, yes. I think that's there's a lot of factors going on there. Maybe it's just obviously, again, I think 2020 played a part, a role in that. People stopped going to theaters. No reason to go back now that with streaming services or is access to home, maybe the desire to go to the theaters or outpriced to go to the theaters. I don't know. A lot of factors in there, which you can kind of use some of those similarities to parks. Is the theme park getting too expensive? Are the food options there too expensive? And so we just don't want to go. Or, I mean, parks are still adding attractions, but mm -hmm. I guess it has, I mean, it's very obvious that it has slowed down considerably since 2020. Nothing really came, I mean, we have, there was two roller coasters in that 2020. Some of the roller coasters that were supposed to got delayed until 2021 or even 2022 or... Yeah, 2022, or was it even that Aquas, the Aquaman roller coaster at Six Flags Over Texas? Like, when did that thing open? Was like 2023? 20, I don't know. That, that roller coaster, that was a joke. It seemed like it just kept getting pushed and pushed. But it's not like how it was back in 2018, 2019, yeah, 2017, whatever, where it seemed like there was a bunch of new additions happening at every park, every uh, lot, of more ro lot more roller coasters. And now it seems just to be really the main, the big main roller, the big main, yeah, roller coasters, big main theme parks like down in Orlando. We're still seeing expansions happening well, there, obviously. but the rest of the country is really getting a lot more slim. And there's still, like I said, there's still additions happening, but just not, uh, not how it used to. Well, they're sure. are they're not big enough additions to pull the crowd back in. Yeah, some like slight additions or like, well, obviously we talked, I talked about this in late many times, like family roller coasters or family attractions. But yeah. So uh, the question is, do theme parks and amusement parks, do they need to evolve? Are they, have they been stagnant for so long? They look the same. They sound the same. They offer the same tickets, the same season passes, the same perks. Do parks need to start thinking about different ways to pull people back in and evolve and change their business model. Is that what needs to happen to the amusement park industry? I would say every, every business needs to evolve to stay relevant and to stay in business. I mean, if you become stagnant, that's pretty much when you close doors. Uh, I mean, obviously Amazon became the, what the number one 
shopping site. Everybody purchases everything online and maybe uh, going to a storefront is not as popular. Not to say that you can push that in the direction of like theme parks, but maybe it's about what you're offering to your guests and what is enticing them to come there and what kind of experiences are they going to get. Maybe they just don't want the same old thing. You have to start, I guess, broadening your horizon, maybe putting on different types of shows, attractions, maybe different types of theming. Uh, A lot of different various things that could be tried. Well, yeah, and I'm thinking like, are there different perks that can be added to season passes that make them more appealing for people to purchase? And then like season pass perks throughout the year that bring your season pass holders into the park on certain days for special events. Yeah, like uh, as much as I mean, I really we currently do not have a season pass with Bush Gardens. If I, we would definitely have it if we were a lot closer, but since our the amount of uh, Bush Gardens parks that we're going to there is not as much, we're not we don't have it. But long story short, they always had something to bring you back. Either they're giving you like Bush bucks. Mm-hmm. Or they are doing like, hey, do so many visits, you get like a free sandwich or something. There was always something to entice you. And I did see that Cedar Fair was kind of getting on that bandwagon as well. But their perks, what I saw, didn't really seem super exciting. It was like visit three times and you get like 20% off like a pretzel or something. Like, ooh, wow. yeah. Like it, the perks didn't really, nothing jumped out of you as like, yeah, that's going to get me in through the front gate. Like, If you're going, you're going anyways. Like, I don't feel like those perks were really perks. But yeah, yeah, that was I mean, but that was a little bit ago. I think that was what I saw like for Carowinds. So, yeah, I think that's definitely something, especially with those season passes to make them more enticing. And yeah, people will feel better about paying better prices if they feel like they're getting their money's worth. And that's where the disconnect is. People don't feel like they're getting their money's worth. And obviously, when the value, uh, inflation, everything goes up, your mindset is different to what you thought. Mm -hmm. What was worth it is not the same today. Right. So. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of people complain in like local Facebook groups about the cost of tickets to go. I mean, our home park is Kennywood. So that's the local park that people talk about in these Facebook groups and people are constantly asking, where can I get discounted tickets? Tickets are too expensive. I can't afford to go. I need to find some sort of discounted ticket somewhere where can a lot of, um, of a lot of the local like banks and grocery stores used to sell discount tickets to Kennywood and they don't really anymore. So a lot of people are now trying to figure out how can we find discount tickets again? People are coming to the decisions of, It's either worth it or we're just simply going to go without and then try other free options out there in entertainment world. Maybe it's just going for a hike into the woods or something. (laughs) I don't know. So, yes, very interesting. And like I said, parks got to evolve to stay on top. And I'm just hoping this is just a, a rough patch here for a year or two. But. Yeah, we don't know. Time will tell, I guess. I, saying, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens as far as if other parks follow suit with Six Flags in Texas, whether they close down midweek. That would be so disappointing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I having the theme park open all year long, especially when it's nice and sunny. I just like the option of like, hey, it's after work. Let's just go hit up the park for a couple hours or whatnot. Yeah. You know, always like that option. But how about we switch over to a more positive, exciting uh, topic? Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, I asked on my Instagram if anybody had any questions for us. And a couple of the questions that came in, like we've kind of already answered. But the one that we haven't really talked about is someone asked, what has been your favorite experience that you guys have traveled to do? So pretty much like our favorite experience traveling to a theme park is yeah. really what I'm yeah. getting out of this. That's a tough one because I don't know it's there's there's a bunch of different. I mean, I always enjoyed our trip down to in 2022 when we went to Disney World for a few days. Well, I was going to say Disney is always the one that comes to the top. But if I want to say favorite experience as in like maybe a little bit surprise, we stayed at like this resort. It's like Bonnet Creek, oh, something yes. like that. Yeah. I didn't really know what we were getting ourselves into there. <laughs> I just saw the deal and I just kind of jumped on it. And 
little did we know like, okay, it has like a bunch of pools. There's like a lazy river, some slides, and it was very nice and relaxing. So that was like this little extra perk. And that really just made the trip so much better. We really enjoyed just even hanging out there at that resort. It was very relaxing. And that's something we've kind of, has been sort of been becoming part of our trips as well. Like maybe we go places the kids really like to swim. So we'll spend an extra day hanging out at the pool or something like that. Yeah. Instead of just grueling, going park after park <laughs> after park after park after park. It's maybe me and Kara can keep up with that pace. But after a while, like either the kids might get disengaged Energy levels drop. People get a little feisty or whatnot. Feisty. feisty. Yes, feisty. feisty. <laughs> but so, yeah, having that day just really makes the, the whole trip feel so much better. Like same thing like last year in 2023. We just had a day where we were just able to just kind of relax. Yeah. And uh, we did go over. We did. It was kind of like a sort of like a half day. Like we spent a couple hours over at like uh, Aquatica. Mm hmm. And we did sneak into SeaWorld Orlando for like an hour just so we could go hop on a pipeline. Kind of like a sneak peek before the next day. Because the weather was a little bit oh, yeah. leery or whatever. <laughs> so we're like, well, let's get on it so we know that it will be open. But the next day, the weather turned out to be great anyways. So I think about the trip that we took in 20, was it 2019 that we drove out? We went to Sesame Place and then we went to Great Adventure. Okay, yep. And then... How did that work? Because we came so the back trip, to Six to Great Adventure. So that trip started off as we drove down to Six Flags America. Oh yes, we started because that's it. actually where we got our season pass, the membership from was at Six Flags America. Well, that's our closest Six Flags park. Yes, so I still think our membership is technically through Six Flags America, but I don't know if it really matters per se. But nonetheless, we went to Six Flags America. That was our first time there. It, it is what it is. And then we went the next day, we drove up and we went to Dutch Wonderland. Yes. For the first time ever. And obviously Leander was very young, but I remember Braylon, Braylon enjoyed it. She was still actually a little bit too small for the two roller coasters there at that yeah. time. But we really enjoyed the park. We really liked the laid back uh, atmosphere of it. And then after that, we went to Six Flags Great Adventure the next day. We had a blast. And then our day after that, we went to Sesame Place. And so our plan was the next day we were just we were going to have a whole day at Sesame Place and then we're going to be driving back. But because we had such a good time at Six Flags Great Adventure, the kids loved the safari ride and everything that we worked it into our schedule that we'll just go spend a few extra hours at Six Flags Great Adventure that day. So we got home a little bit later. But yeah, it was well worth it. It was a lot of fun. And it was it was one of the first big trips that we did with both kids. Like Leander was just was he he wasn't even a year old. He yet. was not a year old. This was that was actually I like to say like the first official like theme park road trip, X Green Thrills road trip or whatever that yeah, we that ever we did. did. And it was a lot of fun. It was it was hard. But we got into a routine. And we learned from it, too. Oh, like, yeah, we learned a ton. Well, yeah, like, that's where we learned, like, hey, maybe jumping from hotel to hotel to hotel to hotel every other night was exhausting when you had a six-month-old because you'd have to set up, like, the crib and a lot more <laughs> work involved. There was a involved. lot of stuff with the kid. It wasn't just, baby. like, we can walk in the door and just tell everybody to get ready for bed and that was it. No, it was, like, a two-hour ordeal. <laughs> it was you know? a process. So, yeah, you had to kind of plan that. But now our kids are a little bit older. Not as big of a deal, so we probably could get away with doing that hotel jumping. But we've really learned to, we really enjoy being at one place, kind of setting up a, like a hotel as like a home base yes. and being able to hit a couple of theme parks around in that area mm -hmm. seems to make the trip, which we did that again last year in 2023 when we went down to uh, Six Flags Over Georgia and Fun Spot Atlanta. We stayed at the same hotel for two nights. Because those two parks are pretty close. So it was very nice that you didn't have to jump from one place to the other. And obviously when we were down in Florida, we usually will stay at the same place for the whole entire duration that we're in that state. Well, right, because everything in Florida is... Right there. Yeah. Is easily accessible. I think, though, what made that trip so fun was just that spontaneity of being like, we really had a great day at Six Flags Great Adventure 
I really wish we could come back. Wait, we could probably figure out how to come back and, like, work it in. And so we changed our plans, and that was just so much fun. And we've done that a few times. We have, yes. Um, when we went to Dollywood in 2020, we changed our plans spontaneously. Yeah, and we just added an extra, an extra night day. Yeah. And um, enjoyed the resort at Dollywood. And so I think, like, that, like, unknown like spontaneous like let's just stay and keep having fun is i think what is a lot and of that it. has been kind of what we've done like like i said last year when we went down to uh to florida we did change our schedule around a little bit there instead of like rushing out to going to one of the theme parks we just changed our plans around or whatnot mm-hmm. So, yeah, we've always kind of liked that being open, uh, being able to just to change our schedules. For the most part, it's worked out well. We went out to California. <laughs> Except we went to California. Because of Accelerator. But nonetheless, <laughs> even still, we were able to be spontaneous enough that we went to Knott's for the second time in a row that trip. But unfortunately, the ride was still not operating that day. It's or it did later in the day. We just didn't have enough time to hang out that long. But we were able to work it into our schedule. And we went there twice when we were only planning on there going there once. So Jose, I think thinking back to that trip in 2019, when we went to Dutch Wonderland and Sesame Place and Great Adventure and then choosing to like be flexible and change our schedules really has like set us up. And we've done that now multiple times and it's changed how we viewed our trips. Yeah. And we I mean, we go into each of our trips with. Like, this is the parks, these are the parks we want to go to, and these are the days that we're going to be at these parks. But we've learned to be extremely flexible in that, and I think that's what makes it a lot of fun. You know, which we actually did that when we went out to Silver Dollar City. Our plan was to go to uh, Six Flags St. Louis on the way. We actually passed right by it. (laughs) However, I did decide last minute, not because I didn't want to go, but just the group that we had with us and the time that we had available we decided to go check check out the St. Louis Arch instead. So we did a little bit more of like sightseeing instead. Uh, so yeah, we haven't made it over the St. Lu- uh, Six Flags St. Louis, but we'll get there eventually. I think it was the right call. So like I said, it's just sometimes you have to make decisions last minute. So yeah, and uh, other than the situation with knots last year, yeah, all of our like spontaneous additions or changes have worked out really really well. Yeah, yeah, most like and but back to the main question, like our favorite experience, I always kind of like to say, I know this is, I don't know, tacky or lame or whatever, is like the next trip, because <laughs> I'm always looking forward to the next trip and how I can make that trip better than the last one. Uh, doesn't always mean that when I always say best, the like the next trip to be better, it doesn't mean that we spend more money. It just means that we <laughs> a lot of better times we, plan it. We spend we, less money. <laughs> yeah, we'll spend less money. We'll find ways to save ways to make it more exciting and engaging for the whole family. Like like I said, making sure that the kids are happy. If that means that they need an extra hour at the pool, then we work that into our plan. Or if the kids want to ride a particular attraction, we'll make sure we'll work that out. Like when we go, like I, I brought this up many times, like when we go to King's Dominion, we don't rush back to... T- Twisted Timbers or uh, Intimidator 305, oh, I'm sorry, Project 305, oh, excuse yeah, get me. get it right, jeez. We go right over to the Joe Cool's driving school because the kids love it. It gets a long line. And we'll do the same thing as when we go to Kings Island. We're not going to go rope, well, actually, we will rope drop their new roller coaster, which is in their their Planet Snoopy, or I don't know if that area is called Camp Snoopy now. I'm not really sure. But nonetheless, their kids section of the park and we will go hit up some of those kids' rides first because those lines will get long. I can handle some of the other longer lines at the, uh, the roller coasters throughout the day, but just making sure that the kids are able to to get their thrills on as well. So, <laughs> But I guess that's pretty much all I had. Did you have anything else? I don't think so. But I know Speaking this is of like next, of, yeah, next what? parks, next trips, I'm um, like... I'm like really dying to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we had to change our, well, speaking of spontaneous, but that was more of because our, uh, we had a vehicle problem. We had to cancel our last trip le- very, very last minute, like very the day last before minute, leaving. like hours before. Yes, unfortunately, but <gasps> we'll work it out and we already have something else planned. It's just how it goes. But it's I'm kind of like, can we life. go somewhere like uh, tomorrow? Right now. <laughs> 
How much are airplane tickets? Like, can we leave <laughs> right now <laughs> yeah. to go yes. somewhere? Yeah, let's just, uh, yeah, I'm just calling off work for the next month. Hey, you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but, all right, well, until next time, this is X-Cream Thrills. Bye!